Hello everyone, welcome back. Today is Varun's birthday and I'm making a special dish for him. Something he's been asking me to make a video of because he really enjoys this. And uh, my father is from Kashmir and he has, um, his family has shown me how to make this. It is a family recipe and I hope you like it. I am making for you today Kashmiri Yakhni Pulao. Let's get started. The first step is to use hot mustard oil. I have taken about three to four tablespoons of uh, mustard oil and I've brought it up to temperature. And I'm going to fry some onions in here. I've sliced one onion and I'm separating it so that there won't be ch big chunks of it. I want a nice golden color. It's going to be a beautiful brown onion. The onions have browned really nicely. You can see the color and I have to take it out. This has taken a total about seven minutes. Now, I like to use mustard oil because that's what is traditionally used for Kashmiri cuisine. But if you don't have mustard oil and you wanna use ghee, that's perfectly fine. Uh, some people use olive oil, that's okay too. In the same hot oil, we are going to put all of our dry whole spices. I've put in a couple bay leaves. This is cumin seeds, about one teaspoon, and then the big black cardamom, and small green cardamoms, four of those, four cloves over here, and a couple star anise, also small pieces of the cinnamon stick and the mace and the java tree. Now I'm just going to put these for a few minutes and once the oil has got the flavors of the dry spices, I am going to add the mutton. Today I'm making it with lamb and you can make it with chicken if you don't want to have lamb. If you want to make it vegetarian, that's fine too. It's very versatile to make this Kashmiri Pulao. Now I'm just gonna leave these pieces here to brown. I want the flavors to be nicely infused and yes, the uh, mutton takes a little longer than chicken does so I'm going to be keeping these pieces in for about 5 minutes. It's been 5 minutes and I'm adding a little bit of salt, about 1 teaspoon only at this point. I will add more salt later and that should be as per your taste. I'm just going to leave it in for another few minutes. You can see it's cooking very well. The mutton has been sauteed for the past 15 minutes. I have cooked it thoroughly and you can see this beautiful brown color. And now I'm gonna turn off the heat. Um, I want it to be slightly cool before I add the yogurt and I'm going to show you uh, what all dry spices are going to go into the yogurt. But before that, I am going to add just a pinch of um, asafoetida. I want to put this beautiful hing which I have from Lucknow. While our uh, meat is getting cooled off, I am going to be adding these powdered spices. These are Kashmiri. Uh, spices, I have ginger powder and soft powder, fennel powder over here along with salt. Now if you don't have ginger powder, go ahead and use ginger paste, it's the same thing. Um, 
I have all the Kashmiri spices, so I'm putting that into my yogurt. This is two tea. Pardon me. This is two teaspoons of fennel powder, one teaspoon of ginger powder, and another teaspoon of salt. I add my spices to the curd so that the curd doesn't split when I put it in there. And please remember, we have to use room temperature curd. We should not use it straight out of the fridge. And I'm just gonna mix it in before adding it to our mutton over here. This has cooled down considerably. It's not boiling anymore. And I can see all the pieces are cooked through. And now I'm gonna add the curd and stir it in really quickly. Now I've put the heat on and I'm going to cook this on medium heat for just 5 minutes. I just want the curd to cook a little bit and in the meantime I'm adding my slit green chilies. You can add as many as you like. I think about 4 is good enough but if you like to make it really spicy you can add more. And I'm just going to stir it in for a few seconds. Um, what I want to now do is add hot water to this so I'm gonna heat up some water on the side. Another 10 minutes have passed and the yogurt is cooked thoroughly. Now I'm gonna add the garlic water. I have some garlic water here which I'm gonna add and bring to boil. I'm also going to add a liter of water to this so that it will give us the gravy that we need for the rice to cook in. So one last step before we close the lid for the pressure cooker is add one teaspoon of pepper to this. And we're gonna give it two whistles and then we shall come back to put the rice. I can see our meat has cooked perfectly and now I'm gonna add a little bit more salt per taste if you don't want to add salt, that's up to you. That's about one teaspoon right there. And I'm gonna drop in my rice. This is like a layering process. I am not going to mix the rice once it is in here. And make sure you have enough water to cover the rice. We don't want too much water because then it'll all become mushy. But we don't want very less water either. And here's the key step, you need to let it cook on slow for about 20 to 25 minutes. We are not going to hurry up this process, otherwise our dum is not going to be there here. I have just separated the rice, it is not mixed with the mutton. About 25 to 30 minutes on slow and these are perfectly cooked love the way the rice is nice and separated we're only going to garnish it with the fried onions that we did in the beginning and that's it i'm gonna now call varun for the taste test i want him to tell me how it turned out time for varun to tell me how did it turn out <laughs> i've been craving for so long your meat is perfectly tender Rice is perfectly cooked. I love it. Happy birthday, Barbara. Thank you.